Hi everyone, I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile, and in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, which I have here on my left hand side. In this particular video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hardware features of the Galaxy Note 3 and compare it to the Galaxy Note 2. Additionally, we're going to briefly cover some of the main software features and enhancements that Samsung has made to the TouchWiz user interface on top of the Android 4.3 operating system. Be sure to watch our other videos in this video review series of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 to uh, see a gr in greater detail about the software on the Note 3. Let's go ahead and get started with the Note 3's hardware. On the front of the device, you're going to see immediately that the front is dominated by a 5.7 inch uh, full HD Super AMOLED display. So this 5.7 inch has the same 1080p HD resolution that many people have on their much larger HD TV at home in their living room. What this translates to is that colors are bright and vivid, texts are crystal clear and sharp, and the display is just gorgeous to look at. The display size has increased from a 5.5 inch display on the Note 2 which has a 720p display so immediately if you're upgrading from a Note 2 you're going to notice that the display on the Note 3 is just gorgeous and super crisp. Yet despite increasing the display size on the Note 3, when you're looking at both devices side by side you're going to notice that the Note 3 and the Note 2 have both have the same height while the Note 3 on the left hand side um, is a little bit more narrow in width. Um, and it's also a little bit more slim in thickness and it's a little bit um, lighter in weight as well. So it gives the Note 3 a very nice feeling. Also, when you're taking a look at the design of the device, when you turn it over and look at the back, Samsung has done away with its glossy uh, back panels which attract fingerprint and opted instead to use a warm touch material on the Note 3. In this case, Samsung calls it a faux leather finish that's um, that's trimmed around the edges, edges with um, some stitching. And from what I can tell, it's just a plastic finish um, that Samsung has done. So it's done a terrific job in maintaining a premium feel to the device while at the same time giving power users access to the battery and a micro SD card slot underneath the rear cover. Additionally, this uh, soft subtle curves on the Galaxy Note 2's um, device with this chrome or fake chrome here, you can see it's um, subtly curved, is replaced with a more angled um, design. So here you're gonna see straight edges with subtly rounded corners, and also this nice plastic trim, which looks like a polished uh, piece of metal, actually has striations or grooves in it to make it feel uh, just luxurious in the hands. So Samsung has done a great job to add a premium finish to the Note 3 while at the same time preserving some of the accessibility features that power users like, such as a back battery cover that's still removable to review a very large 3200 milliamp hour battery, which gives the device over a day of usage if you're a moderate user, along with a micro SD card slot. The Note 3 this year comes with 32 gigabytes of storage, which is double from what the Note 2 ships with at the base model, and then you also have the ability to add up to a 64 gigabyte storage card slot as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the device. Um, just, just go around the device and take a look at some of the hardware. At the top, you're gonna have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack with a noise cancellation microphone right next to it. On the other side, you're gonna see a infrared blaster which is used to control your home audio or video equipment in your living room with the watch on application which turns the Note 3 into a um, touch screen remote control for your living room. On the right hand edge you're going to see a power button and towards the bottom here you're going to notice that there's another uh, noise cancellation microphone. On the bottom edge um, there's going to be a lot going on here with a microphone here. Um, and then new to this device or this device series is a micro USB 3.0 slot. So this micro USB 3.0 actually charges and syncs the device faster when you're plugging it into a USB 3.0 uh, port on your laptop or your PC. And the plug is wider this year so it accommodates extra pins to accommodate the faster data uh, transfer speeds. 
in reality, you're not going to notice any difference in charging time when you're plugging the device into a wall outlet. So, and also another uh, nice thing about the USB or micro USB 3.0 port is that it's backward compatible with existing micro USB 2.0 ports. So um, you can just go ahead and plug it in. It's not going to benefit from the faster data transfer rates if you're plugging it into a USB 3.0 port on your computer. Also new is that rather than placing the speaker on the bottom back, Samsung has now moved the speaker down here towards the side edge on the bottom so it actually um, amplifies the sound towards you if you're laying the phone flat on a tabletop rather than be muffled if you're laying it down on the back uh, surface like this. And at the top, you saw a blue blinking LED notification light. So the device does come with a notification light as well as a 2.0 megapixel front facing camera. On the back, you have a 13 megapixel camera that was introduced on the Galaxy S4 earlier this spring, along with a single LED flash. The camera can also record on certain variants, including the model here that I'm reviewing in the US for T-Mobile US uh, 4K video, which has added uh, resolution power compared to the full 1080p HD videos. So with 4K resolution, you're gonna need a 4K display, 4K laptop, or 4K uh, HD TV or UHD TV monitor to actually benefit from the added uh, pixel resolution. So unless you have those to view the content capture, I would recommend sticking with a 1080p video recording just to maintain um, a decent amount of storage on the phone without going overboard. Like the Galaxy Note 2 and the Samsung Galaxy S4, you're going to see um, the TouchWiz user interface. And this year what's new is that by default, um, the main apps page, Samsung has consolidated all the pre-installed apps. So um, by default, this is you're only going to see one page of apps and then you can go ahead and download additional apps from the Google Play Store. So here I have more apps, but essentially when you first power on the phone, you're just going to see this page of apps and nothing more, which is a nice change from earlier devices where Samsung has installed a lot of bloatware onto the device. In order to maintain a manageable amount of um, apps and still contain it in one page, Samsung has put most of the main apps into folders. So here you're gonna have a Samsung folders with, uh, with some of the main system apps. Um, Watch On is on here, which is the app that controls the infrared blaster. And it's used as a graphical way of connecting and controlling your home TV. I'm not gonna go ahead and set it up right now. Um, and then there's a Google Apps where all the Google applications lay. A Galaxy Plus app, these are some of the enhanced applications that come pre-bundled for free on the Galaxy Note 3. So on certain versions, you're gonna get uh, 50 gigabytes of uh, free cloud storage through Dropbox. You're gonna get Bloomberg Plus for additional content, a sketchbook for Galaxy for um, artists who prefer to draw with a pen. And then T-Mobile, since this is a T-Mobile carrier edition, you're gonna get a T-Mobile app with select content from that carrier as well. This year with the S Pen on the bottom, the nice part about the pen is that you can um, now activate the capacitive whole, uh, buttons on the bottom of the display with the pen. That was something that was missing on the Galaxy Note 2. So if you're drawing or writing on the screen, you're gonna have to switch between, a, uh, between your fingers to activate the, the capacitive buttons here on the bottom. Additionally, when you're removing the pen out of its silo, as you saw earlier, is that now there's a new uh, command. So the air command is a new option that comes on the Galaxy Note 3, and it has five new functions through this radio dial that you can access with your pen. So new are Action Memo, Scrapbooker, ScreenWrite, S Finder, and pen window, which we're gonna discuss in greater details in a separate video, so be sure to tune into that one. Also, um, once you open up the settings menu here, you're gonna see that Samsung has included a number of the features that, um, these are motion or touchless features that were enabled 
on the Galaxy S4 earlier this year. Some of those features are genuinely useful, others are superfluous, and it just depends on what type of user you are if those features are useful or not useful to you. But you do have access to all of the features that are on the Galaxy S4, including some of the motion controls. So you can go ahead and if you're on a long web page, just swipe your hand over the screen to go ahead and flip or scroll through the pages as well. There are air gestures, and the display will automatically um, stay lit or bright as it is right now if you're looking at it because it's always sensing your face or your eyes looking at the screen with the front-facing camera. Additionally, there are other features, and Samsung also has an increased touch sensitivity setting. So like on the Galaxy S4, you can use the screen with gloves on, which is nice since this phone is launching in the fall time. So users in colder climate who would need gloves in the winter can use this phone with uh, light or thinner gloves on. And like the Galaxy Note 2, one of the hand, um, hand hallmarked features of this device is the multi-window view, which we can go ahead and activate. So just turn. And this allows you to multitask. And this time, unlike with the Galaxy Note 2, one of the new features is that you can go ahead and launch two applications at the same time. So um, I have chat on on the bottom, and now I can go ahead and launch a second chat on on the top. So this way it gives you a lot more flexibility and the ability to multitask. So these are just some of the software features that are enabled on TouchWiz. And to compete with HTC's Blink feed, which aggregates news and social media content, Samsung had traditionally included a Flipboard application on the Galaxy Note series. But this year, if you go ahead and press on the Home button, from the main home screen, what you're going to see is that uh, this year there's a new, uh, this new application is called My Magazine and it's essentially made by Flipboard. And it gives you um, just different uh, cover stories and it also gives you, I think I launched, here we go. So it gives you access to four different categories. So you have the news and you can go ahead and scroll through different news items that you select. It also aggregates the personal content on your phone. So if you have missed calls, notifications, calendar alerts, um, even your S Health and some of your gallery applications as well. Here and Now gives you access to the content or the activities that are going on around you right now. So local movie listings, events, and things to explore around town. There's also a social hub here that gives you access to various content through your social network. What's curious is that although this is very similar to Flipboard and is actually made by Flipboard, um, so the social hub actually only integrates um, a limited number of social networks. Flipboard actually also integrates all of these along with the Facebook um, for your Facebook wall posts. Unfortunately, on this one, it's a little confusing and Facebook is not included here, but it is still included on the original Flipboard, which is also pre-installed on the Note 3. And to configure this, all you would have to do is launch the menu button here at the top, and then if you hit the arrow, it's going to give you options to um, add whatever uh, content you desire that's um, available to select from. So this is Samsung's response to HTC's Blink feed, which debuted on the Galaxy or on the HTC One, which gives you a more visual way to interact with some of your personal content. So this is a quick look of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. The version I'm reviewing is from T-Mobile US. It does have a quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor along with three gigs of RAM, so multitasking should be a cinch. Um, stay tuned and watch our next video on some of the software features and some of the features that are enabled with the S Pen on the Galaxy Note 3. I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. Thanks for watching, and until next time, please visit us on gottabemobile.com for additional content and coverage.